In this video, we are going to discover how to scale Airflow with the Celery Executor. If you remember, the local executor spawns multiple local workers or sub-processes fetching the tasks to execute in a task queue. This queue is used to coordinate and spread the tasks among the local workers. Well, the Celery Executor needs the queue as well, but in a more complex way as a third-party tool is required, such as RabbitMQ or Redis. For this example, I used RabbitMQ, but in the Docker part, we will use Redis, so no worries, you will see both. Whether to choose the first one or the second one depends on your use cases, there is no right answer. Alright, let me give you a quick overview of RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is an open source message broker software. It acts like a middleman accepting messages from producers and delivering them to consumers. Producers and consumers are programs such as a Python script, a Spark application, a logger system, and so on. So, let's say we have a producer like a login system, producing different levels of logs such as info, warning, and error. On the other side, there are a bunch of consumers, three in our case, each one analyzing a specific kind of logs. In order to send the right log messages to the right consumer, RabbitMQ allows you to specify bindings. A binding is a relationship between an exchange and a queue. So in this example, since we have three log levels, we specify three bindings, one for each, binded to the corresponding queue, either info, warning, or error. Finally, each consumer is waiting to receive the log messages coming from its queue. That's how you can spread messages between multiple services in a very elegant way. In the case of Airflow with the Celery Executor, the tasks will be sent to RabbitMQ in order to spread them among the different workers. Now we have seen the queue, what about the executor? The Celery Executor runs tasks in workers. This time, a worker is a machine among a cluster of machines or nodes. On each node, a worker is running, waiting for tasks to be sent from the scheduler of Airflow into the RabbitMQ. Like the local executor, a bunch of sub-processes will wait along with each worker where the tasks will be executed. That being said, let me show you how it works. Here is an example of architecture with Airflow and the Celery Executor. The scheduler and the web server of Airflow are both running in node 1. The Metastore or MySQL is running in the node 2. RabbitMQ is waiting to receive tasks in node 3 and workers are waiting for tasks to execute in nodes 4 and 5. So at first, task 1 is getting scheduled. Then the scheduler sends task 1 into RabbitMQ. Since both workers are free, let's say the worker on node 4 fetches the task from the queue. And finally, the task is executed in a pool of sub-processes on the node 4. This number of processes is defined by the parameter worker underscore concurrency, here limited to two per worker, so up to four tasks can be executed in parallel in the cluster. So the same process goes on for all the tasks 2, 3, and 4. If we would like to be able to execute more tasks simultaneously, we would need to add a new worker just like that, as well as increasing the number of allowed processes per worker by changing the worker underscore concurrency parameter. Here we can execute up to 6 tasks since we have 3 nodes. Now let's say each worker node has 4 CPU cores and we set the worker underscore concurrency parameter to 4. Now 12 tasks can be executed in parallel. Alright, now let me tell you some important notes. First, since your tasks are going to be executed on different machines, pay attention to the dependencies required by those tasks. For example, if a task relies on Spark and Spark is not available on a given node, then you will end up with an error. All the dependencies should be installed on all the nodes of your cluster. Next, the folder DAGs should be in sync with your workers. Indeed, if one worker has an older version of a given DAG, you may get inconsistency in your result or even errors. The easiest way to do this is to set up a NFS mounted on each node of your cluster so that the folder DAGs will be shared by all the nodes. Finally, since Airflow is installed on each node to start the worker, the configuration settings defined in Airflow.cfg must be homogeneous. 
I told you, moving from the local executor to the salary executor is another story. So be ready for it. Alright, let's see the pros and cons of using the salary executor. First, there are some third-party tools to maintain, such as RabbitMQ, a dependency manager, and so on. This increases the complexity of your architecture as well as the learning curve of your teammates. Next, the workers must stay in sync, meaning same folder DAGs, same configuration settings, and same installed dependencies. Otherwise, errors will arise. About the advantages, the salary executor allows you to scale as much as you want airflow since it is based on horizontal scaling. Adding a new machine will increase the number of tasks to process. Finally, the salary executor is widely used in production and very reliable. Alright, that's it for the theory. Let's see the salary executor in a real example. See you in the next video.